and telling Jewish students today, quote, it deeply pains me to say that I would strongly recommend you return home as soon as possible and remain home until the reality in and around campus has dramatically improved. The White House also speaking on this matter today, saying, quote, while every American has the right to peaceful protest, calls for violence and physical intimidation targeting Jewish students in the Jewish community are blatantly anti-Semitic, unconscionable, and dangerous. They have absolutely no place on any college campus or anywhere in the United States of America. We are joined now by Dr. Sheila Nazarian, an alum of Columbia University. Doctor, I appreciate you joining us tonight. Thank you, Natasha, for having me. What are you monitoring over the last few days, and what are your thoughts on what's happening at your alma mater? I am so deeply, deeply disappointed, and I do want to point out that this is not just at Columbia University. We are seeing this on many, many college campuses that are being investigated by Congress right now. This is not new either, Natasha. This stuff has been happening on college campuses with the student bodies calling for boycott, divest, and sanctions against the state of Israel through student body votes. Unfortunately, I have been speaking to Columbia University for many, many years about this anti-Semitic undercurrent that has been rising. They did nothing about it. They went ahead and pretended it wasn't there, and they're like, oh, look, but we're doing an exchange program with Israeli students and creating excuse after excuse and allowing these things to foment and gain more power. And with October 7th, you would think there would be empathy for Israel and the innocent civilians that were raped and murdered. But the opposite happened. And look at where we are now. You know, Megan McCain, uh, similarly, she tweeted out that she is, quote, embarrassed of the fact that she is an alumni of Columbia University. That is a strong statement. Do you feel similarly? I absolutely do. I mean, you know, the students, uh, the alumni of Harvard, some of them are suing for the devaluation of their diploma. Again, this is not a sentiment just at Columbia University. I was just at Trader Joe's last week. I saw a gentleman wearing a Columbia University shirt and I said, you know, unfortunately we went there and he's like, yeah, it's, it's you know, unfortunate. But I'm hoping, I am praying that sane minds and powerful administrators will have the will to protect Jewish students on campus and to create a guiding light for other universities to do the same. This is starting at Columbia, but already an email went out to UCLA today. I'm in Los Angeles asking the UCLA students, putting feelers out there, hey guys, do you want to do a similar thing on the UCLA campus? The Columbia University administration right now has to be the guiding light. They have to set the precedent so that this does not take over and infest other universities in the United States. Do you feel that the school is failing even in this moment? I know it's so hard. I'm not going to say it's easy. It is It is hard. But look at Florida. Look at what DeSantis did. He came out and said that hate speech and anti-Semitism and boycotting and divesting from Israel is against the state laws. And he just nipped it. He nipped it in the bud. So we know it's possible. There just has to be the will to make it happen. So let me you ask, know, what, what, would, what would you like Columbia to do right now? I would like Columbia to get it together. I want them to either it's to invite the NYPD and the NYPD put a statement out today, Natasha, saying that since it's a private institution, the NYPD police officers have to be invited onto campus and they have not been. They are standing around campus and are not allowed to go in. The directive has to come from administration to allow the NYPD to go in, and they have not been given that go ahead. That's number one. Number two, protect your Jewish professors. There's a Jewish prof professor who is asking for police escort to go and teach. This is not okay. That's they have to put down a hard line. And, and a really easy way to think about it, Natasha, for your viewers as well, if this was happening against any other minority community on the campus, let's say a mob was inside and outside Columbia University calling for the lynching of black people, calling for the lynching of LGBTQ people, do you think this would be allowed for even a millisecond? Absolutely not. So why is it allowed when people are calling for the lynching of Jews and October 7th to happen 10,000 times on a college campus? Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.